you guys. All right, are you ready for Sunday's video? Sunday's video is going to be about, tonight I'm just gonna be answering some random questions. I got a few questions came into my inbox on my IG page. If you guys aren't following me on IG, uh, our IG is Tenacity Clean 912, okay? So, um, I had a couple of questions come on my IG and on my Facebook page. Facebook is Katrina Johnson, or you can Facebook Tenacity Academy, okay? So, the first question that came in, um, I forgot who asked me this, but it was, do you have contractors or employees and how much do you pay them? Okay. Okay. I'm gonna try to do this real quick because my house is loud, as you can see. I got my kids in here watching SpongeBob and daughter back there listening to Young Boy. All right. Um. So, do you have independent contractors or employees? I actually have both right now. Today, I actually hired another contractor. Um. And for you, your situation might be different. So you can't really go by what someone else's biz, um, situation is. Everybody's company is different, is ran different. We have different clients, right? So for me um, and my employees, they clock in and they clock out at the location that they're at. They wear uniforms. And um, of course they get a W-2 at the end of the year. For my contractors, they don't have to wear uniforms. They come with their own supplies, and they mostly do stuff like um, move in, move outs, uh, construction cleans, or some office cleans. They do some office cleans too, where they get paid by the unit. Um, they may get anywhere between sixty-five to a hundred dollars a unit, and it may take them anywhere between three to five hours to complete whatever they're doing. Okay. So that's my answer to that. I actually have both. I don't really have a preference on which one. I just feel like it depends on the uh, it depends on the unit, on the contract. You know what I mean? So for some contracts, it might you might just need a contractor on it, not an employee. Um, and then some you might need an employee. So it it depends on the structure of your company, really. Okay. So um, the next question was, how big is the competition with the apartment contracts? The competition is really big. It's huge. Everybody's trying to be a, a cleaning company nowadays, but I don't want that to um, discourage you. Don't let that run you away like, oh man, everybody's trying to do it, so I don't need to do it. Everybody's not gonna clean as good as you either. That's just how I, I know it's competition. I just did, um, about 60 cold calls uh thursday and i tell you i probably got like one person out of that 60 that i called to say hmm i'm looking for a cleaner you know one out of 60 people everybody else was like i got a cleaner i'm happy with my cleaner i'm happy with my cleaner you're gonna get that you know so the competition is huge um i've noticed that a couple of apartment complex a lot of apartment complexes aren't really loyal you know uh <laughs> if someone else come in there and outbid you and there's five bucks cheaper they might actually go with that person um the loyalty kind of is mm. but that's why it's really important for you to keep a great relationship with your clients uh, relationship is some people like when i do my cold call i can tell the cleaning company whoever got whoever they got they doing what they supposed to do okay because i can't i can't get in there you know what I mean? So that means that they're doing their job because the, the clients are like, no, we love our cleaner. All right, bye. You know what I mean? So that's how you got to be. You got to do your job um, and do it damn good so that nobody can weasel in there and try to take your contract. Okay. So um, the next question was, uh, well, he said, I used to go around to office buildings and uh, people just seemed as if they didn't need our service and it can be discouraging. Yes, it's definitely discouraging at times. Definitely. I mean, that's what trying to get anything is going to be discouraging. It's going to be hard. But nothing great 
is going to come easy. So you must do this every day. That's why I say only the strongest survive in this company. And I'm not really worried about competition because a lot of people just ain't strong. They're going to, they're going to try it. They're going to do it for a couple of weeks or whatever. And then they'll fall off. Okay. So I don't be, I don't be discouraged. I just keep going, 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 going. Um, but yeah, the competition is huge. It is. Uh, the next question is, feel like we need to hire, but not sure if we are financially ready yet. Um, I guess they were trying to say, uh, when would be a good time to hire when you feel like you're financially uh, fit? Okay, let's put it like this. Let's say you just started a cleaning company and you only got one unit. Okay. So let's say you just started a cleaning company and you only got one unit. That one unit takes you five hours to clean um, by yourself, okay? Let's say you get paid $150 for that unit, okay? You need to do the unit first and you need to master it. Then you need to put together a checklist for that unit. Then you need to try to find someone to put in that unit. But if you need the money off of the unit to pay your bills, you're not ready yet. Okay? So what you might need to do is find a side hustle. You might need to get an, another job or uh, sometimes you can get a little side job. And all the money for your side job goes to your employee while you're waiting for your checks to come in. Because you know you got to remember you're going to be getting paid on a net 30, sometimes net 15, net 30. And it's not like being an employee where you get paid every week or every two weeks. Employers have to wait longer. So it's a cash flow thing. You got to make sure that money is coming in because your employee is going to be expecting to be paid every two weeks or every week. Okay, so you have to have those funds for it. So you do the calculation, whatever it adds up to, that you decide to pay your employee or your contractor. And you just need to make sure that's in the bank every two weeks so that you can pay that person once you have that in the bank and it's best to do it with your income tax i mean it's income tax season so use your income tax check the whole check i would i would use that that's your payroll now you can have fun go out get clients get employees and you already got your payroll set if you got your income tax check that's that's a perfect thing to do with your income tax okay um how do you prevent or assure that a customer won't call their bank and say they have no knowledge of this service? CC payment reverse back to the client. Hmm. Well, you really can't assure that someone would be a butthole like that. <laughs> um, I would say it's very important for you to be as professional as possible okay be be very professional have your service agreement have them sign the service agreement um usually when someone is physically signing something they feel like they are obligated to keep what keep their word on the paper okay so um i would say have your service agreement and stay professional at all times you know only buttholes would do stuff like that and you don't want to attract those type of people so it's no nah, i'm trying not to say assholes i'm trying to keep it you know but cc the payment back to them like after you do the work and then they just do some more tricky stuff like that i've never had that happen ever not saying that it wouldn't happen okay but i've never had that happen i always try to try to operate at a high frequency and i attract what I put out okay so I need you to do the same thing if you go in there slacking or whatever you might attract that foolishness okay so because that's foolishness right there I ain't gonna lie um the next question is what kind of services do you have in place to assure that your operation is running smoothly hmm <laughs> okay my operation is 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 not running as smooth as I would love for it to run. Okay, um, I don't think that I would get to that level until I'm like at a seven figure level or whatever. But as you can see, 
If, if you follow me on Instagram, you see me still out there. I'm, I still clean and I still do my office work. So I'm not at that level yet to where I'm just floating. I can go to Jamaica tomorrow and my company is just running on autopilot without me. You know, um, there are some days that all my units are booked and I don't have that physical work to do, but I still have office work to do. So, mm, um, but what I do to make it run smoother than it was running in the when I first started was I use software. I use software to automate my company. Um, and I have a video on some of those softwares that I use. Uh, you, what you need to do when you're building a system, all a system is is instructions for for you to what well, all it is is a strategic plan that's put together strategically and, and it's in it's some it's, it's rules you know that you guys are gonna have to follow every day every day it's something i should be able to take my hiring process and hand it over to another company and, and say follow this procedure okay it works it's going to run smoothly if you do it this way step one step two step three step four you know and um that's that's all the system is man people act like it's some magical shit it's really not all it is is just a strategic plan put together and you use a bunch of automated softwares to make it run smoothly in a nutshell, that's what it is. Do you think contracts or residential cleaning scares? Do you think contracts on a residential cleaning scares the client away? No. I actually think that it makes you look more professional. Okay. Now it says you spoke on compliance on one of your video. Can you can you speak on that a little bit more further? Okay. So what I mean by being in compliance when when you go out to get a move a apartment complex okay when you go get an apartment complex a lot of the apartment complexes are going to refer you to their compliance company and what the company does is make sure that your insurance is legit everything is up to date it's not expired and you send instead of sending all of your information to the apartment complex you will send it to the compliance co um, company and they'll keep up with your information and make sure that you are legit and you're in compliance once they tell you that you're approved then they're going to tell the apartment complex that you are approved and then you'll be able to be a vendor now what usually happens is you're cleaning units over and over you'll keep and you might go out of compliance because you're not keeping up with your hold on because he making all this noise y'all okay like i was saying um once the compliance company says that you are approved then they will uh email the apartment complex tell them you're approved and you're good to go you can uh you can start cleaning your for the apartment complex right so what usually happens is well this is what happened to me we're cleaning units we're cleaning units we're getting up to what two thousand in cleans right and then they told us um they couldn't pay us because we weren't in compliance and i'm like okay well when, when did we go out of compliance and why the hell did y'all have us still keep cleaning units okay so once you go out of compliance all you have to do and i'm going out of compliance means that your ins insurance expired so you have to have for this particular property i had to have three different insurance i had to have general liability insurance i had to have workers comp and um insurance on my vehicle um and if one of the insurance expired you have to go back to your insurance broker and tell them to email you another certificate that's up to date and then you take that certificate and you send that certificate back to the compliance company and tell them to approve you again so that you can get paid because they won't pay you if you fall out of compliance 
So you have to really, you got to keep up with the dates on when your insurance is going to go out of compliance. Sometimes it might be, I don't know, it depends, six, six months, uh, it might take a year before it goes out, but you have to watch that because these apartment complexes or it might be whatever you're messing with, they, they could have you cleaning units and then all of a sudden say, oh, oh, you're not in compliance, so we can't pay you. You got to get back in compliance. Then we can pay you once you get back in compliance. So that's just the situation I had to deal with. Uh, but all it is is you just go back to your insurance broker um, and you tell them the situation, email me another certificate so I can mail it back to them. You might have to pay a little money or whatnot, but that's how you, you get back in compliance and then you can get paid and finish cleaning. What I usually do, if they ever tell me that they can't pay or whatever, we can't continue cleaning for you. What do you mean? So we just stop cleaning. If y'all saying y'all not going to pay us, I'm not going to continue to keep providing you guys with service. Like, I don't care how backed up you guys are. I mean, <laughs> you ain't helping me. I can't help you, you know. So um, anyway, that's, I hope I explained it all right for you to where you can understand being in compliance and this i only had to deal with this with apartment complexes it's strange because i never had to go through a, a, a compliance company with none of my apartment with none of my um office facilities or uh, construction cleans and stuff like that i only had to deal with this with apartment complexes so far i don't know Okay, so the next thing was explain the difference between a general clean and a deep clean and go into details. Okay, this is really quick. This is easy. A general clean is like a basic clean on your home. You know, if you got guests coming over, that quick clean that you do, you're going to clean the bathroom, you're going to make your beds, you're going to uh, vacuum, sweep, mop. You're going to um, wipe off the counters. You're going to uh, just do a, a basic clean on your house. That's a general clean. A deep clean is a more detailed clean where you are going to actually hand wash the fans, hand wash the blinds if needed, um, hand wash the baseboards inside the refrigerator, inside the stove. Um, you might take all the stuff off the shelves and wipe the, the shelves down you know this that's a detailed clean that's a real deep clean when they say oh i need a deep clean on my house that mean they want they want you to do some extra okay you ain't gonna be in there probably for you're not gonna be in there for no two hours they, they want you to spend spend some time in there you know um but you just ask them do you want whenever they call you you ask them do you, would you like a deep clean or a general clean and then you just explain to them, you well, a general clean is more like your basic home cleaning where we'll come in and we'll make the beds and we'll vacuum, we'll do your bathrooms and and um, your kitchens, ah, dishes. If it's not a lot of dishes in there, we'll do them. But if you got it piled up, like, you know, uh, that's like a deep clean. <laughs> but for a general clean, you know, if they have... A little little bit of dishes in there we'll wash the dishes and put them in the dishwasher stuff like that but if it's just outrageous like y'all had a party y'all you then um they need to schedule a deep clean for that because uh, you know it, it's it's going to take time it's time consuming and of course deep cleans cost more than um general cleans okay and i went over all the prices in my pricing video but in case you haven't seen it a general clean for a apartment usually runs between, um, I would say, depending where you're at, one fifteen and one fifty. You know, for for a general clean, depending on how big, depending on you know all that stuff matters. You know, um, and for deep cleans, deep cleans should start at one fifty. And they can go all the way up to 500 on houses, you know. So you should want to start at 150, and they can go all the way up to. I've I've done a 500 dollar deep clean on a uh, pretty pretty large house, probably about one of those 300 thousand dollar 
homes okay so um yeah that's it in a nutshell if you guys have any questions you can just shoot them to me and while i'm up tonight i'll i'll try to get to all of those or i can get to it on my next sunday's uh video that i'm gonna put out because i'm extremely tired but i wanted to really get this video out here to you guys i thank all of you guys for the support i've been getting a lot of support on my instagram page and hey we're new to youtube okay i just started this page in january and here it is march all right and we almost up to 300 subscribers so thank you thank you thank you <laughs> okay you guys keep us going all right well keep me going all right so if you got any value out of this video please hit the like button share subscribe do what you do and i will see you in the next video